Here we go guys, for the game number 2 we have the red Mordor player bank at the bottom right versus the blue Isengard player Farad at the top left. Okay, the same map, Forts of Brunin, one of, I mean, one of my most favorite maps actually. Um, not because it's made by us, no, but I think it's balanced, it's symmetrical, looks pretty nice to me. Also with the retexturing, I think it's a very beautiful map. So huge shout out to Palindru and also to Dimek especially because he was the man who was making all this possible. Lots of work. Oh, Slaughterhouse start from Mordor. I like that, to be honest, because that's also something you can do now. It's a bit tankier uh, in compared to a Lammer Mill. It gives you also a little bit less money, but it's as it costs you the same money now. In the you know in the previous versions, you had to invest more money to build that. Now it only costs you 200. Oh, but what is Farad doing? That's a huge mistake from Farad. Huge mistake from Farad. Oh, he messed up big time. You want to get this one first. Why? Because this one is closer to your fortress, which means it's easier to be protected and harder for your opponent to reach. But he skipped this one and built the Uruk pit way too soon. The opening from Bank in the previous game was just much, much better. Double furnace opening, get this, go for the third furnace. And use your Uruks not for defending, but send them forward to deal damage. So this was a great, great start for Bank, and he needed that, he's 1-0 down. Um, very good start. Look, Gollum can deny this. Look, look, that's... You see? Oh, 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 was close, man. When you can snipe it at 0%, it, you can, you know, make the opening lose like 200 money, which is a lot of cash at the beginning of the game. And would you look at that? Dude, Mordor is playing. I, oh, Isengard actually went for the for the slaughterhouse. Um, that's a mistake, though. <laughs> like, look, Lambre meals are just too good to miss. The only reason why I would ever build a slaughterhouse in front, you know, instead of a lumber mill is if there are no trees nearby. But if there are tier, tier, you know, trees nearby, you want to always build lumber mills. And not because of the money you will get from it, no, but because of the wood bonus. Especially early game, the wood bonus is so incredibly important to get your buildings cheaper. This additional 50 or 100 resource you save for each building is so much worth in the early game. You don't want to miss that. Okay. Mumu kills don't get food bonus anymore. Yeah, it's intended though. <laughs> they are busted now. <laughs> That's the problem. They are too strong now. Okay. Isengard is actually, you know, fighting step by step forward. But if you don't hurt more the economy, look what's happening. You see? Double Orc pit, four slaughterhouses. Look, Isengard money. In the, in the last game, at the same time, while Isengard had a full base, Mordor didn't. But now, Mordor is as fast as Isengard. You gotta punish Mordor early game. Smart move from Bank, demolishing the building he knows he can protect. And Bank also needs to stop fighting. And kind of beat them in to follow him, you know what I'm saying? Look, Gollum. Look, Gollum is annoying, you see? Can't touch this. Did it, did it, did it. And this kind of moves I like to see a lot. He's hiding, you know, dancing around the Rosie. And trying to deny him as much time as he potentially can. This way the Isengard player can't capture this settlement. But Gollum is not as fast as Uruks. Uruks are the fastest swordsmen in the game. And the poor, you know, cutie Gollum has been taken down. Okay, that's the first time Isengard is reaching out to this mill. And Mordor in the meantime is a full beast. A bank might make a mistake and will eventually try to go for a Nazgul. What I like to do personally is, if I'm not sure, if I'm not 100% sure that I will have a Nazgul before he will have Blades or Armor, then I will always build a Troll Cage and recruit only one single Mountain Troll. Only one. So with the, mount with the one Mountain Troll, I will not only deny my opponent to actually attack my base with Uruks, but also I can pr protect my settlements outside, you know? And then I can still save up for a Nazgul afterwards. I don't need to recruit more Trolls. I can just use the one Troll and save the money up. For a Nazgul Litan. Don't fall behind. Isengard's base is not looking very good, but he has money. He's going for Lourdes, okay? Okay, so I believe Farad is playing for the, for the late game. Like, you don't want to go Lourdes if you want to go for early rush. So maybe Farad knows, okay, you know what? I'm too late. I'm just too late. I can't go for a rush anymore at this point. I don't need to buy Blades, so I can just get Lourdes. Hopefully, I will get him to level 5. And then I can try to, you know, win the mid to lead game. 
because he knows that early game is kind of messed up now. That's going to be a Nazgul rush. Uh, but again, more... Oh, Bank is listening to the stream. <laughs> hey, Bank, how are you, my friends? How are you? Nice to meet you, Bank. He's listening to the stream, guys. <laughs> He's like, I, I would do this. And then 10 seconds later, you see demolishing slaughterhouse, building a troll case. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a legend, dude. All right, all right. Uh, Uruks are leading forward. Towers are coming up for Isengard. Lourdes is going to be on his way very soon. Uh, Lourdes is creeping already in the meantime. That's good. Um, though Isengard is doing a good job now. Not recruiting a troll yet. How many orc pits does he have? Two orc pits, okay. So what Isengard could have done... What I would do, you know, again, this is my opinion, what I would do with this Lord, I wouldn't send him to this location. I would send him actually to this location at the bottom left side. And creep this one, and then buy this outpost, right? What you can do with Isengard against Mordor, and people, they, don't under, they underestimate that. You can buy the outpost, build one tower, right? One tower on this spot here, on the outer spot. Then you, be, you just put like a crossbowman inside, and double furnace. So Mordor will have a really hard time, early game, to destroy your outpost with only orcs it will take them 10 of 10 battalion of orcs to even take down the tower you know so orcs without leadership without uh, you know levels they will struggle to take it down so what that's what you can do against mordor against mordor it's just a very different playstyle in compared to any other faction mordor is just so different and unique the flying heroes and the monster uh, faction, you know, the trolls, the moment kills, they are so different, you know, in compared to all the other things you might eventually have to deal with in the battle for Middle Earth games. Give us some room. Okay, he's creeping a lot. Farad actually, I mean, I'm surprised. Like, Farad is definitely in the business here, right? Mordor is struggling in, com in terms of map controlling fights, and Isengard is recovering quite a lot, right? A lot, actually. Remember, and I think um, Matthias was asking me in the chat why Haradrims in the previous game. You see why Haradrims? You know, you could have creeped this one already. You could have creeped this one already. Even this one with the Haradrims, you know? You have like the early presence with the Haradrims. And when you don't do that, you are always aiming to get to late game. Which might work out in most cases, but it might also feel, you know? That's why Haradrims are definitely good units at the beginning of the game and mid game. They can also be a great protective unit to the outpost. So Lourdes was able to get solo experience from this creep. He is now almost level 4, uh, getting really close to the power spike of level 5. Mordor is moving on to the outpost now. There's also two trolls up on the field going for the third troll. Maybe I was wrong, maybe he was not listening to the stream. Okay. Hold on a second. You are not gonna do this. Oh. Oh, oh, what? Interesting. Very interesting. So what he's doing... Hmm, dude, I, to be honest, I think it's gonna work out. What he's doing now is he doesn't combine them. He doesn't make combos of them. What he makes actually Uruks and separating them from, from the crossbowman. So what he can do is use the full potential of the each individual unit. Crossbowman with the wedge formation, right? Um, to deal more damage from a long distance and then, and, and, you know, protect the Uruks with the crossbowman and then the Uruks with heavy armor and forge blades for the maximum damage output and you can also use the shield formation, right? Block formation. Become more tanky. The problem is, this Mordor doesn't have a Nazgul or a Troll, cage level 2. A Nazgul could mess this army up, right? He has no fear resistance, not even banner to level 2. But he has not a Nazgul, nor a Witch King, nor a Drummer Troll. Skip the Troll and go for a Nazgul now. Uh, he's going for both at the same time. I think he wanted to go for a Witch King, but he can't. He can't afford it. So that's a very nice play. I like this. I'm actually curious if this is going to work out for Farad. Did he war chant them? He missed the war chant on the crossbowman. But yes, you know, these two crossbowmen can still kill with Lourdes, the three trolls. Like, they have no chance when the troll cage is not level 2, when there is no Drummer Troll. Oh, very smart move from Farad, by the way. Very smart move. Can he take down the Citadel before the Nazgul comes out? Can he take it down? Oh, the last five, three seconds and the Nazgul comes. But the, output, the Citadel is going down. 
Screech can be used now. Kill the crossbow man first. Very smart move. Kill the crossbow man. Oh, you see the cripple is chunking the Nazgul a lot. Screech is on cooldown. Now you gotta be careful with the troll. Lourdes is being attacked. Oh, he knocked down his own trolls, but Lourdes is getting bullied. The crossbow men are dead now. Can Lourdes survive this? I don't think so. The troll is on the hand. You have carnage. Use carnage, bro. Just stop. Use, you know, put on your sword. Oh, he's microing with the, <laughs> with the guy. Oh, but, you know, in your butt, son. You know, he's like punching him in the, in the forehead, you know? In the you know, back of his head. And Mordor is still in the business. But, dude, he lost the troll cage. Which is very important building. That means he has only one single drummer troll who is almost dead. And no way of sustaining up, right? And that means now he needs to build the troll cage again. Get it all the way to level 2 before he can recruit any more drummer trolls. And if he doesn't do that, all Farad has to do is kill this troll. Which is almost dead, this drummer troll as you can see, right? And then the Mordor army has no leadership because that's not a witch king, that's a Nazgul. Right? And look at the minimap in the meantime. While he was doing that, he was also focusing on map control. Farad is popping off this game. Very well played. And, you know, the small things. The strategies. The mind games. Mordor is the outposter. That's good. Uh, what I would do in, instead of Mordor is I wouldn't even bother building up a troll cage at this point. I would just try to go for a second Nazgul. ASAP. You know? ASAP. Creep this at the bottom side. Uh, he needs to build Orpid, definitely. He needs to pressure the map once again. Mord Isengard is just getting too much money. Because now he's gonna make combos and combos. Lourdes is level 4, very close to level 5. Fear resistant is gonna make the Nazgul explode. <laughs> you know, literally. Because the Screech is gonna be pointless once Lourdes is level 5. Nice. So, I mean, the thing is, Farad made the best out of the situation, right? Um, there is also treasure. <laughs> like, Balindru put treasure everywhere on the map. <laughs> I see a treasure there, I think. Or? I see something glowing there. It's not a treasure? I don't know. Looks like it, though. But it's not. Okay. You can't take the money with the Nazgul, unfortunately. Um, Mordor has to get an orc pit. If he has only one orc pit, it means he cannot contest the map control. Yeah, okay. Now, even a Saruman is coming. Saruman is coming now. And even when Lourdes is level 4, Saruman will give you Fear Resistant. And you will be just good to go. Oh, the, the timing. Um, Mordor is still one power point away from Darkness. So, you remember Darkness, you need now 7 power points for that. And also Rain, you need 7 power points for that. So, what we did is we lowered the Tainted Land power point from Isengard from 3 to down. Two, and the scavenger from four to three. The new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. Oh my goodness! ASMR Saruman, a new power is rising, and its victory is at hand. If Lords, oh Screech, crash, crash as much as you can. Oh, doesn't one shot them. But that's better. To be honest, that's even better when you one-shot them, because look how low they are, you understand? Like, next attack, they're gonna get killed, regardless how much uh, about how much leadership they will have. Next attack, they will crash, they will get crashed. Okay, so, three combos, Lourdes, Saruman, and Warchan available. The thing is, that Isengard play didn't go for land. So what Mordor can eventually try to do is go for an attack with the Nazgul and the Trolls and then use land before you engage. Oh, look, smart move from Farad. Is he gonna give it to Slurz? Very smart move. You see? Very smart move, dude. You see, he was creeping this, giving the last hit to Lourdes, so Lourdes gets level 5. This, the, these are the plays I want to see the most, you know? These small things, they are so important. Now, bibidi babidi boo in Lourdes has leadership a lot. 60% more damage. That's huge, by the way. 6 power points collected for Isengard, but he needs 7 for Rain. And Mordor has also 6 power points collected. Troll Cage, level 2 now. 
Yes, in total, one, two, three, four, five trolls. And one almost dead drummer troll. No witch king. Um, and there comes the big commitment. Look at them shining bright like a diamond. Their army is glowing. My eyes are hurting. <laughs> you know, they, they gonna he wanted everything they touch. Mordor has to make a move before Isengard gets inside the jeans. That's very important. You wanna handle them before they can get inside your castle. You understand? Because outside they will get now freezing rain. They kill stuff, collect power points. There comes Saruman. Kill the drama troll. He's waiting for the drama troll. Number two. But he's feeding. He doesn't demolish the buildings in time. And he will have rain very soon, right? After he destroys the building, he will have rain, by the way. He went also for the, for the orc arch. That, I think that's that's not needed. Oh, that, he has rain now. Yeah, he has rain now. And Mordor has no darkness. Even if you have darkness, rain shuts it down. So, now you gotta make a move. He's gonna use rain here, right? And the trolls... We gotta keep an eye on Saruman, because he has the chance to steal them and make them fight for you. Rain has been used, trolls are charging in, but they have no more leadership available. The trolls are going ham, the Nazgul trying to knock them down on the ground, and fight. He missed them! He missed them! He missed them! He- Oh! He gets one-shotted! He, he miscalculated the movement, but it doesn't matter. Without leadership, these trolls are paper, and they have no chance. The Witch King can't do anything about the situation either, and you see the new fall animation from the ground, from the sky on the, on the ground. The Witch King, the Nazgul is no more. He had money for the Witch King, but the beast is gonna fall apart. The men of Gondor. Army of the Reptilians. Thanks for the fall. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Level 6 combo, level 3 combo, and Mordor is gonna fight until the very end, but look at the minimap in the meantime, darkness is available, but he is falling apart. Three drummer trolls, they are ready for the afternoon party, you know, the Sunday celebration party, weekend over party, or call it whatever you want. We will have a witch king very soon coming from the outpost, uh, he has double outpost, that's why he is getting still money. He needed orc pits, yeah, he has orc pit here, you need to pressure the map, but there comes the reinforcements. And remember, Lourdes is still alive. It means fear resistant is still a thing. And Witch King can't... I mean, the one thing you need to understand is when you are level 3 or higher, you automatically get fear resistant. It means these two combos, level 6 and level 3, they are already immune to fear, right? Okay, so one troll, three drummer trolls. But there comes a Witch King. No man can kill you, but... Oh no, fear, Lords is here, and, yeah, look, oh, he knocked down a tree, and GG's gonna be called from bank, too much damage, too much burst, and Farah did it, 1-0 into a 2-0 situation, and he needs only one more victory to decide this quarterfinals for himself, and move on to the semifinals, well played, very clean icing a performance, I like that. Especially the move he made, you know, with the Uruks separated, not as com combined units. Very smart move. Using the momentum, distracting the Nazgul with the crossbowman, and using the Uruks he has in the base to destroy the troll cage was a huge achievement.